good morning or just about afternoon on Bowling Nerd Network. Welcome to continued coverage of Mixed Worlds live from Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Glennis McKinley starts off. One, two, four, six, eight, ten. And on the left, the birthday boy, Mark Weber. Happy 24th with a lemon truck. <laughs> <laughs> a dollar for Al. The bucket is filling right up. Hey, look at oh, that. Huge spare conversion. It's pretty when it goes, as our colleague Dave Chester Cove always says. A great start for McKinley. Weber's washed out seven more and has one, two remaining. Mark Weber from Ellsworth, Maine. Nine to begin. And Glennis McKinley from Hudson, New Hampshire. Thanks as always to Paul Grant for the painstaking work to get the research on everyone, including, and thank you also to all the bowlers for providing that information. Some on late notice, but greatly appreciate it. And hello to all of you in the crowd today at Bowling Nerd Network Live. Pleasure to bring you this and show you and let you know about the best bowlers. We have a great variety here, as Mixed Worlds always brings out. Good turnout from Canada this year. McKinley's spare fill is seven. She's got a two and one split. Maine very well represented, and of course, Massachusetts and New Hampshire. Both east and west. A couple of pins chiseled out here. Third ball's coming up for each. Kelly gets a good third ball and has a nine. Weber needs sticks of his own. Gets the head pin and two more to match it. Now just like that, Sarah Simmons and Amy Dubé. Fremont, New Hampshire. On the head pin, and they all collapse. Simmons on the head pin, likewise, but didn't get all the carries. Six, seven, eight, and ten. Well, has a piece of wood that's diagonal. Looks diagonal enough. It's hard to tell from the angle we stand at. But she is high on the wood and gets it. Unbelievable carom. Going right to left, high off the wood. To match the mark by Juve. Yeah, it is, huh? Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, you got a new one, I feel like. Sarah Simmons averaged 1.20. Amy Dubé, 107. First part of the strike bill is 9 for Dubé. Simmons has a 6. And a 4 horsemen a chance for another. Oh, piece of wood didn't go. So nines or tenths for each of them. So programming note, we're usually joined alongside Paul Grant, but he is covering a very important match right now, on recording for now, Team Coca-Cola versus the undefeated Penny Lanes. I think we've figured out how to work the uh, live stream. We're trying, we're trying to run that one live on Bowling Nerd Network right now. So, those, not to distract people from this match. <laughs> <laughs> Two 16 and 16 yeah. teams. This one, this one's going to be a barn burner too. Well, folks, we're splitting the party and doing the very best we can. I mean, I'm doing my best to keep an eye on the social media. We haven't been able to do that perfectly all day, but rest assured, we appreciate each and every one of you joining for however long we can. Oh boy, Skinner got the lily despite a good pocket shot. Meanwhile, Smith with a four horseman shot still leaves it up for the third ball. Skinner chisels the five pin into the ten, not the seven. Joe Smith. Six turns into nine. And if I'm reading that correctly, and all ten pin advantage right now. Yeah. 
two marks to one in the early going. For the bottom shelf. Bottom shelf, of course, a reference to uh, the, the, the liquor that uh, Glennis McKinley would bet during a match. You say, 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 let's play for a drink. You say, but from the bottom shelf. <laughs> Anything, anything you want, as long as it's from the bottom. Second ball for Smith hits the pocket, no go. And he completes a 10. Joe Smith out of Academy Lanes in Haverhill. Garrigan Skinner. Grew up bowling at Stars and Strikes at South Paris, Maine. Now at 1-7-10 in Augusta, Maine. Bounces back with a great head pit hit and a nine box to match the 19 of Joe Smith. 11 pins in the early going. Big smile of relief there from Gary. Uh, Brian on the left and a Brian on the right. This is Brian Purdy for drywall concepts on the left side. Brian Kroll for bottom shelf on the right. I'm just going to change just to a shade of navy. That seems to be, by and large, the prevailing team color. All right, that's it's fair. Three and two split. Well, no, it's red there, though. All right, you, you, you may you can go back and forth when the red ones come up. Well, I reached over and changed the Excel sheet, so that's fine. I say defiantly to the executive producer. Girl just to the right of the three pin on that shot. Five and dime for Purdy. He's got a piece of wood at back. I don't know about this one. Prowl's average has been one, 117 through the through the first 12 games. Um, Brian Purdy right here. That's right. He is going left side wood and just narrowly missed getting it. Birdie is averaging 112 over, over 12 games played earlier today and going back to Friday. Kroll, Kroll is 8 and Purdy is 8 as well to match, keeping the 11 pin margin intact. Brian Purdy at a big 20 bowling center in Scarborough, Maine. Ryan Kroll, Academy Lanes. He's, he's one of those with a 200 game and a 500 and a 700 high five. And 202 high single, high triple 500, a high five of 715. Gigantic hammer by Kroll in the second. Just scurrying to check the social, make sure everything's going well, make sure nothing's on fire. I try not to say too loud. Lee wants to know about standings. I'll be curious to check in on that myself just as soon as we see Purdy roll this third ball. So, yeah, so definitely, uh, we still don't have the full tally from the last game, but I was giving updates through the, through the eighth. Penny Lane is undefeated, 32-0 through their first 16. Coca-Cola and Harry's All-Stars behind them. Coca-Cola is second. It uh, was just uh, two losses. Harry's All Stars, the Price's Wood Flooring, and uh, JDS Seamless Gutter, all with uh, three losses in the series. The other standings, we'll, we'll get we'll get you those updated. And, uh, just kind of... But remember, a shocking win by the one seven ten Hurricanes over Harry's All Stars earlier, knocked them uh, out of their tie for second place. They're into third. You'll want to watch that match on Spread Eagle Productions and Bowling Nerd Network if you have it already. Or if you're time is short, just skip ahead to the Scott Saroy's parts. You're welcome. <laughs> oh! There! Shall there on the horseman. Carrier with a two and one split, and he narrowly missed the ten pin, cutting the king pin in front. The advantage grows from team bottom shelf. Moving their way up. <laughs> Sorry, folks, I amused myself way too easily. Nine box. Immediate chance to gain a four, gain on top of the 14 pin advantage that Jalbert already has. Oh, 
Tim Jalbert, the man who's won two Pro Series events, gets an eight fill on the spare. He's out of Academy Lanes. They are tall. Glennis and Amy both pull out of New Hampshire, but we sense a recurring theme. Our carrier out of 1710. Good bounce back ball. Both bowlers open. Six through two. Good job there. Carrier darn near got a ten out of that. He ends up with a nine and picking up picks up one pin. So throw two boxes a twenty-one pin edge on eighteen to ninety-seven as you see under screen. Sarah Simmons the low spare for trial and contents. And two strikes and two spares on the board. Fourteen bottom shelf. Including the one Brian Kroll will be working on next visit. And pin hit from Mark Weber. Pins topple. And if you missed me mentioned earlier. Oh! Mercy McKinley with a strike in the third. Weber's try at the seven pin. Doesn't match the mark. How he split that one and seven is beyond me. Almost the harder thing to do. Folks, if you're watching, please put in the comments, happy birthday, Mark. He turns 24 today. That's 10. Happy birthday, Mark Weber. Mark averaging 114 during the uh, championship. Nope. McKinley needs a second ball. Got three on the first one. Mark Weber out of All Play Entertainment Center in Belfast, Maine. Paul Grant made the trek up there and covered the 10 stringer which he, Mark Weber was involved in. Six on the strike fill for McKinley. Well on her way to her 110 average. But she's been carrying so far in this championship. Mark Weber 37 through 4. And McKinley checks a couple more pins and has 50 in the fourth box alone. Forty-four total lanes here at Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts. Eleven of them shock full of high octane action. Well, twenty-two of them, of course. I don't know why I would think they would use the same. Simmons. Simmons gets three on the first ball. Both bowlers open to start this one. Dubé out of Exeter, New Hampshire. One, two, seven, and nine. Do you know this? Paul Grant and I couldn't figure this out. This note here for Sarah Simmons. Tied state record. What could that be? We'll have to ask. Not sure on that one. Which state? Probably the state of Maine, where she's from. We had to bowl across state lines for a lot of these championships, but uh, which one? Yeah, high single, high uh, series. Well, just matter of factly, it's wonderful to be able to actually cross country lines for the world's competition. Nine bucks a piece. I apologize, Bob. No, oh, I'm just drifting off here. Now yeah, we're all drifting. Here. Sorry, couldn't resist. Five, five minutes out for Dubé. Simmons took out six. Has the one, three, seven, and ten. There is wood wired towards the ten. Seven pin is a vertical piece of wood to its left. And pin one was a one drop, which might make the out slightly simpler. Dubé got in the pocket, but the head pin bounced off the side wall in front of the six ten. Maybe Dubé high single one ninety eight, high triple four eighty. Sarah Simmons, high single 169. This is a high five of 689. Dubé picks up three pins with a 10 box. 
Bringing up Joe Smith against Kerrigan Skinner. Kerrigan Skinner dominated the Candlepin New Generation TV show, three-time champion, I single on that show for the women. Takes out the entire right side. Joe Smith with a tournament average of 115. Kerrigan Skinner's tournament average has been 102. Joe Smith, no stranger to TV, having been on it four times. Got on the pocket, yes! And the corner post drops like the rest of them. And against a nickel, a significant swing. Both bowlers used 2.7 pound bowling balls, which there was some confusion. Lemon drop. One dollar for Al Johnson's candle for cancer. We make a big fuss out of that, but it is actually going to a good cause. There's a pin out front at the front desk at Academy Lanes, and the bowlers really are dropping dollars in there. And it's all going to a good cause for bowlers and their families, afflicted by the terrible disease, at best financially. Four on that fill for Joe. Still, still facing. Uh, looks like six pins up there. Big mix, yes. Joe collects a good ten box, turning four into ten. Now here comes Brian Kroll on a strike fill. We see the advantage mounting from bottom shelf in a hurry. Teams look to be evenly matched, both 16 and 16 coming into the coming in today. But uh, great start, absolutely brilliant start for bottom shelf. I lost my train of thought about the ball weights. 2.7 means two pounds seven ounces. It's not yep, a true decimal the way we express it. Yeah, 39 ounces if you have to plug it into a formula. You want to see what your kinetic energy is at a given speed, for instance. One half times the mass time, mass velocity squared. Ryan Purdy, and the angular velocity of a bouncing ball, bouncing about five feet in the air, results obviously in a four, seven, nine, and ten, because the physics of this game are very clearly explained. Girl strike fill. So far. One of the things I found out is if you make the switch from a two seven to a two six ball, and you gain one mile an hour, if you get the, 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 the exchange of an ounce for a mile an hour, you'll gain on kinetic energy. It does more damage to the pins, in other words, by about 3% uh, more. Interesting. Yeah, so Ryan. Just, you know, if you want to use your, your uh, high school physics at some point. When Paul Grant surveyed Brian Kroll, he brings up, I use 2.6. It's all about rotation. That's right. Well, a lot of it is. So, five fill. Nine versus five on that one. Yeah. But with the five fill, sorry. Yep, so 38. 28 all told. 28, five yeah. fill, five box. All right. Birdie's got 25. I want him to have a 38 though. And in a jiff, he blows out eight pins, five and nine. Crawl, looking to start something up again. Might just be able to do that with wood in front of the nine and ten. Next. How about that? Now let's see if this wood works. Kroll uses the front wood, trying to pile drive the two. And the nine bit drops, but not the ten. Might have run out of kinetic energy. But a lot of potential in that powerful windup. It's a ten box. Leads still 40, 40 pins, 41 now, but uh, Brian Purdy in the bonus. Greg Guillard alongside Bob Lee, not physically alongside Paul Grant, but he's still very much here, commentating a very important match. As Bob looks up nervously to see if it, the stream's working. 
Oh, the microphone, of course, didn't work initially, but uh, we got the sound up and running right before the start of this one. Oh, what do you get? Quarter Worcester. One pin chisel. The three pin was the one pin chiseled out by Mark Carrier. Jalbert chance, one nine, yes. This is Carrier. Carrier, beg your pardon, I got my wires crossed. Carrier's first spare. Got 28. Jalbert, a good second ball and a chance for 10 out. Avoid giving anything away. Thirty-five for Carrier. That's <laughs> twenty-eight for Carrier plus a ball. Now I just did. And Tim Jalbert at thirty-five through three. Now that I've uncrossed everyone's wires, including my own, drywall concepts in the gray PBA esque shirts with a green accent. Carrier's average on the tournament one twenty so far. Tim Jalbert at one sixteen. Crushed on the head, Pan Carrier gets a nine drop. Yeah. If he can versus Spencer, he's up even higher. That's a huge hit as well. King hit. Jalbert can't get the extra one either. Good chances for both. Carrier spares. And against an open. Ten. Nine. I heard a loud car horn out there. Dave. Academy Lane's pretty close to the train tracks. Uh, wicked axe next door. Also, they're throwing axes at the, in the on the other side of the wall to our right. A lot like, of different targets, balsa wood through uh, hardwood. It's amazing how they really put a lot of thought into the material there. It has something to do with how the axe sticks are. I don't know, something like that. I'm no expert. We replace the targets frequently. More frequently than we re replace our pins, but, uh, you know, you could relate. McKinley starts with six. Weber. Birthday boy! Six down, four to go. He's got one, two, four, and an eight pin hiding back there. A piece of wood could enable him to reverse oh. direction. Can he get that carom? Pocket shot, yes. And it goes as satisfyingly as one thought it might. Six fill on. Sorry. That's a spare in the fifth. McKinley gets a good out, turning six into nine. And she moves up to a 59 half. Good, solid leadoff bowling. Mark Weber is going to close the leadoff gap. Three hits on the board now, so you might see this one come down in short 10. Yeah, keep your eye on that. It's 29 for Bob Shell, but there's three marks for drywall concepts, including this one. For the main man. Another one. Crushed! Six pin. Nine fill on the spare. And a 56 half. Can lay just narrowly away from the head pin. Still a chance for 10 against the four horsemen. Mark Weber. Four, just wide. 44 miles an hour, so put him in the 44 club. I know he's only 24 years old, but uh, there are only a handful of bowlers. Uh, like, literally one handful of bowlers that, that throw 44 or higher that I've, that I've seen. Six into nine again for McKinley. This is not a recording. Weber matching nines. Leads down to 20. Two hits on the board, both for drywall concepts. Uh oh. Dube dropped the ball in the foul line. Sarah Simmons got the head pin check mark right side. She likes, she likes to throw it from over there near the uh, 10 pin where, where it releases. That one would have been a step too far. Back on the head pin. Has a two and one split. Great recovery. Oh, 
Sure, the spares don't come consistently, but pins can. Oh. Plenty of time to rebound with a good Brazilian box. Good pin. That's close. That's quite nice. It is fair, it is a nice box. And a 57 half for Dubek. Simmons gets a 50 half of her own. Amy Dubé won the Ladies International title with both the States and Canada. Dubé has four horsemen and the five and the eight pit. Doesn't really have a name. I call it the left side. Yeah, so I got the right side symbol. Is that? Yeah, that's that's a way way to Just didn't carry the seven. A good place ball. Simmons half expecting that devious split to go. Just a little too full on the two. Nine apiece. And the advantage will remain 21 minus two balls from team bottom shelf. Carrie and Skinner and Joe Smith up now. Pulling up averages as fast as I can. The strike! The five was the last of all for Joe Smith. Skinner back on the hat pin herself. She's got a tricky triangle. Number three. Three, five, and six. On target, yes! A satisfying simultaneous explosion. And now she's got a chance for a 50 half. But Smith gets a strike to stem the tide. He's on the hat pin. We'll have a good fill no matter what. Triangle number two in his case. Skinner try, got a piece of the head pin, yes, and get the same exact leave. She will not have a second ball, though. Joe got an eight fill on the strike. Let's give Skinner a chance. Trying to throw the same ball. That's why. Skinner gets a pin. That has 57 through 6. Joe Smith 71 through 6. And now Brian and Brian show is up. Brian Purdy on a snare on the left for drywall concepts. Had a great conversation at, at uh, I think it was at the U.S. Invitational last November. And Brian Crow is explaining his concept of the, of the grip. He has fingertip control. As do a lot of bowlers, but he, as he holds that ball up near his ear when he starts, and it, the way that the ball comes off his fingers—that's that, what he—that's what he's most proud of in his in his game. And you can tell. You know, this is, I think I was talking to him right after he threw it a 183 for the high single. Of the U.S. It is spare, spare on the five. Purdy needs an out. I can get this. It's gave, very gettable. Gave me a gave me a new sense of the uh, the role of the fingertips in the, in the, in the, in the game. Already a recent participant on Candle Pins for Cancer gets a great out. It gets a nine. Both bowlers showing momentarily a forty eight half. Kroll with the chance to go higher. From the shoulder, and the wind up and delivery. Smith full, but got six. A decent spare bill. Birdie's going to get a domino late. He's got two nine. Hmm. Barn door in front of that nine if he can swing the two pin that way. 
Three and one. Roll on the. I thought he would got it on the outside, but apparently just a smidge full. So all told, after an eight from Kroll and a nine from Purdy, current advantage now it is 26. With a bonus ball still to be rolled by Mark Carrier. So bottom shelf held it. Held them off so far through this. It looked like they had a three three nothing advantage on the um, on the bonus, and the lead was down at twenty one. But uh, good bowling in there from uh, Kar Kerrigan. Uh, the spare from Mark Weber helped. A big nine fill in the seventh. And good solid pinning. I think it's mostly nines, tens, and a few marks over the last few for bottom shelf. Fairfield. Carrier lands on the three pin, got six. And he goes over par to start. 53 through four. Two pins straight back for Jalbert. Tim Jalbert has been on TV before. Oh, oh what a spare! Oh. That landed on the two pin. And the wood kicked back on the head pin for a spare. You will do that on purpose sometimes. I'm not sure if that was one of them. If the pin, if the pin's behind it, though, you know, hit the two pin, it, it, it will, it will swing back and knock that one pin from the back. Frozen wood got the job done. Shall there, especially when you have uh, the post over there in the corner to hit. That, that is not a bad idea. Way. Another spare fill. Oh, nice. That's nine, and that's a 72 half for Mark Carrier. Come on, what a great ball, John. Mm. Jillier picks out the two pin. Carrier spares again. 82 plus through six. Cooking it up. Good 10. Shelbert finds a way to. Nick the head pin slightly to get back to the 8 pin. These TV lanes seem to have a way of producing some crazy things, some crazy scores, some crazy results like we saw earlier. Mark Carrier wears the crown, literally for the coffee score scoreboard, with the only mark. Hey, right here, Tina, let me see one. For his team, but let alone anyone. Weber crushed it. He's got the 6 pin. He's had a few good hits on the head pin, but he doesn't have a single box lower than nine. Molly McKinley, who already had one strike, darn near got another. She's got one spare and one strike. Weber picks it up. 75 and a ball through seven. In the same leave. Again, if you haven't already, wish Mark Weber a happy birthday. He turns 24 today. It is down to 11. It's 12 o'clock on this Sunday, live here from Academy Lanes in Haverhill, Massachusetts, for the Mixed Worlds coverage. Bob, it's been a long time since we've... Well, you covered this tournament last year for Spreading Hill Productions when it was all by yourself. I, I, We've come a long way. I got about half half of the shows I tried to put together on the air. <laughs> Mark Weber throws a 44 mile an hour scorcher. Yeah, started with one really long stream that timed out after eight hours. <laughs> and then I broke that up into segments and put them up on uh, what was then the brand new Spread Eagle production. It's like six on that fill for Weber. Sorry, it's 81. Weber again throwing my 44 fill. miles an my hour. My fill is 80, actually. It was five fill. It was a five? Okay. I got distracted reminiscing and thinking about how my recordings timed out during the Pro, pro League. Uh, 
nonetheless, that was a fun day covering all that. And you can watch all that on Facebook, Bowling Nerd Network, and on YouTube, Spread Eagle Productions. Nine versus ten, McKinley's got 88 through eight. Number nine brings him up to 89 through eight. Greg, I'm gonna go check the updated standings and uh, leave you with the, the scoreboard. And the, and Sounds good. Seven starts on the head, but two full. Okay, cross lane, head pin. Deserved a bit more carry than that, one would think. Instead, we've got a lead, I don't think we see that often. Two, five, six, eight, nine, ten. Simmons, good carry on the second ball, and a chance for a decent out. Jimmy's got a tough one. She got the object pin as well, and her box is going to be okay likewise. Bait box at least. Seven for Simmons. Ten. Apologies for the slightly distracted commentary. I'm doing the best I can to do to keep up everything, but nonetheless, the scores you see are correct. And a big margin for bottom shelf. It was a lot more earlier. Drywall concepts starting to close the gap. Simmons got eight. Pocket shot too big, got him all. And Simmons matches to the spare, and we're going down the stretch. The cap remains 10. Good crowd on hand watching here at Academy Lanes. Hey! Nice match for the gaps, close in a hurry. Kerrigan Skinner got the DC special. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. 1, 3, 8, and 9 for Joe Smith. Joe Smith from Wilmington, Massachusetts. Kerrigan gets Skinner from South Paris, Maine. That's for each bowler coming up. Skinner catches the wood and turns five into eight. Been hit. Some margin just about the same as it ever was. I'm not sure how I got that high. Meanwhile, oh, Smith has a blank in front of the triangle in the middle and wood in front of the seven. Skinner's try. Unlucky not to carry more, hitting the three pin. Off oh, balance slightly. Not bad for Smith at all. Darn near pulled it off, but the, the nine pin did not go. The chance for 10. Picks it up. And a 17 pin edge for team bottom shelf. Brian Kroll of Stowe, Stowe, Massachusetts comes up. Face Brian Birdie. Drywall concepts within a couple of marks. Didn't miss that head pin by much. Now, Wood has come to branch the one and the two pins, giving him, a, I believe, an easier try at that 10 pin. Carl gets the half Worcester left side. Nice try. Oh! 
Catherwood. If you heard that reaction, it was for Corrado Ponte getting a tremendous strike. He's 111 through 8. Spoke. Now he's got a blank in front of the nine. Go! Wow, Boudreau, what a ball, baby! Nice try, Ken. versus Hay Bale is a sleeper. Back! And not anymore. He matches the mark. Up the anchor bowlers. All right, good night, as fast as I can. Carrier got the head pin at a two and two split. Triangle number five. This wood isn't convincingly angled, but there should be a way. Carrier, two and two try. Got around the right side. Now there! It's off the back. Yeah. Phil was six on that two and two split. Well, there it is, friends. 14 pins. Carrier, four and two washout. Head pin hit. Five and seven. Eight. Rochelle Bear. Carrier got on the head pin. Good strike, seven down, three to go. And a spare! Using the back piece of wood, Chalbert. Carrier darn near got a 10 pin with that piece of wood. Instead, we'll enter in nine properly, and that is a 106 through eight. Alright, single so far. After eight boxes. Gladys McKinley, who's been having a solid string, strike and a spare. And only five pins left on the deck. Starts with a half whisker. Weber's got two spares. Right for that one into the six. Clocked him at 44 miles per hour earlier. Four more spin at eight for Weber. And the third ball, McKinley, two, four, five, six, and ten. Tough shape for each. Six for McKinley. And eight for Mark Weber. Bob. Well, Craig, uh, this match is getting tight. It is even tighter over on lanes 14 to 15, where uh, Penny Lane holds a six pin lead. But Josh Daly just made the 17810. 
and uh, they have a two to one advantage on, on Phil's after eight complete. So they're going down to the last, basically the last frame, the last 10, 10 boxes, virtually tied. Weber crushed this one, did he get the three? Everyone on drywall and boring it to drop. He's had a number of nine pin drops. It's perilous though, it's practically vertical. Hits it low and gets it. Kelly picks up two more. Eight box, 102. Three marks. It's going to be a good finish. We resolve one of them right now. Last ball. Weber got the head pin. And get six. 113. Bottom shelf ahead by probably two marks at this point. The one on board plus the five pin advantage. Amy Dubé on the right with a strike. Phil working. Sarah Simmons on the left with a spare working. We've been saying that uh, they were both tied, but I think um, Drywall Concepts actually came in with a two game lead according to these latest standings. Two game or two point? A two point lead, yeah. Two point lead, one game lead. Drywall Concepts at 18 and 16, bottom shelf with, uh, at 16 and 18. Both on a single pin try, Dubay doesn't get hers. Still in the was further down the lane. Match is tightened up. So both fills are nine as a result of that. And then put ten on the board for each. And when the dust settles. Bottom shelf happy to see Marks come off the board with their lead still intact. 4-6-3 versus 4-5-8. Oh, made it to the head pit. Got a skinny slice. Simmons crushes in and gets the king pin for the lead. Yeah, so uh, actually uh, they're within four pins. Uh, Drywall Concepts has averaged 544 over the course of the uh, first 16. Simmons and Simmons makes it a critical one. one. His average 540, so a four pin difference between the two teams. <laughs> Dube with a tremendous 114. Next world's bringing out the best in the best of the best, again. Simmonsville brings her up to 107. Bringing up Joe Smith and Carrigan Skinner. Again, folks, once this broadcast ends, we will end this stream and start again. Don't forget to like and follow the page if you want to be in the know about all our bowling streams. Either way, we appreciate your support just by watching. Smith is the one, three, seven, and ten. Got in the pocket and rang the seven pin. It got around back in the seven, I'm fairly sure. Skinner on the head pin. Left the five, six, ten. Yikes. I can match this Joe Smith nine box. And gets on the object pin for an eight. In pinball, it's a three pin advantage. If Kroll and Jalbert both fill well, it will be a bigger advantage than that, but we'll see. Joe Smith! 
Lovely. Two bikes in front of the 610. The front one's definitely covering the back row. Oh, seven or better. Hard to see from this angle, I confess. Skinner takes out three. Let's try. Red line, yes. And he puts up a mark to solidify the advantage. Tough shape here, one in the middle and two on either side. On the object pin, yes, a good out. Turning five into eight. Now Joe Smith to fill on this spare. He got the head pin and he will get an eight fill. Job done, 117. Brian Kroll and Brian Purdy both on spares. of Coca-Cola versus Penny Lanes. That's why we don't have Paul Grant here. He's over there covering that top of the shop lineup. Between two high ranked teams, including one undefeated in the round robin. Cole had the five and halfway down, and now all the way down. For a double strike. Smudges on screen somehow. Birdie completes a nine box and has a 96 strength. That score is correct for Brian Crow using 122 in the 10th. Fifty-two at the stage. Oh, the head pin, and that's the thanks he gets for that. And his final ball got on the four-seven. Nine, Phil, and the final one hundred. 37 for Brian Kroll. Strike on spare. The hits just keep on coming. Eight for Carrier. 
I apologize, folks, that I can't see the social media. I did the best I could to have a look at the comments. But thank you so much to everyone watching. No matter how frazzled we get here, no matter how much we split the party and ambitiously trying to bring you the best of the best, just know we appreciate every one of you for watching. Thank you. Carrier had a huge hit. He's left the king. John Bear still feeling the strike out the headpin this time and has a spare. Chance for a team 600, perhaps. Carrier spares and has 124 and a ball of his own. What high level bowling we're watching. Four for Jalbert to conclude a 128 string. And Mark Carrier got a lot on the end. His final score, 133. A tremendous effort. And the final score is confirmed, as you see it here, 598 to 534. Triple digits for everybody on bottom shelf. A well-rounded win. That is always good sportsmanship, as you see on your screen. Folks, this stream is ending now, but another one soon to start. Still three more matches after this one. So for now, my name is Greg Guillard, and on behalf of Bob Lee and Paul Grant, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you in just a moment here on Bowling Nerd Network and Spread Eagle Productions.